Satan is a really bad dude. He uses religions, including Christianity, to peddle another Satan, who is even worse. I'm on a mission from God. Welcome to The Biggest Jesus. I'm glad you're here. Down below is a link to the upcoming Omaha Area Conference that will be taking place this coming September 16th through the 18th. The link will take you to the information page for the conference. Please join us there. Simultaneously, while religion peddles another Satan, they are also peddling to you another Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 11, 3-4, Yet I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deludes Eve by its craftiness, your apprehensions should be corrupted from the singleness and pureness which is in Christ. For if indeed he who is coming is heralding another Jesus, whom we do not herald, or you are obtaining a different spirit, which you did not obtain, or a different evangel, which you did not receive, you are bearing with him ideally. Throughout the millennia, many false Jesuses and many false Satans have been peddled to humanity and readily accepted by the masses. But the scriptures hold the truth of who the true Jesus is and on the other side, who the true Satan is. There are many aspects of the false Satan that elevate him above who he really is in the scriptures, and at the same time, it diminishes who Jesus is. Here we have God and Jesus and Satan in their proper positions. God and Jesus elevated far above Satan. But as soon as a lie is introduced that elevates Satan, the nasty byproduct is a diminishing of God and Jesus. This is how we end up with another Jesus and another Satan both of who are far different from the real Jesus and the real Satan. And with every subsequent lie that elevates Satan, God and Jesus are diminished more and more, until we end up with what most of religion offers, a Satan who gains a great victory over God and Jesus by causing sin and death to remain forever in God's creation. Satan wants you to believe that he is a member of this ultra-exclusive club. Creator's Club Universal that club does not exist. One of God's greatest claims to fame is that he is the one and the only creator. There is no other. Much of Christianity wants to strip God of this exclusive attribute. They attempt to create a creator's club to attempt to make God look better. Why in the hell would they do this? Because the almighty creator God himself said something so earth shattering, so universe shattering, that Orthodox Christianity cannot put its stamp of approval on what God has said. What did God say that shakes them to their Orthodox core? I am Yahweh and there is no other, former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil. I, Yahweh, make all these. Isaiah 45, 6-7 What did he just say? He said he created evil! Oh my God! Call all the deacons! We have a cold red situation! Christianity has a problem. It thinks the fact that God created evil makes him look bad. To fix the problem that they perceived, they had to find someone who created evil. And it did. It pointed the finger at Satan. But in doing this, it created a worse problem than what they thought they had. Now they've elevated Satan to co-creator status with God when the scriptures are very clear that God is the only creator of all things. In John 1, 1 through 3, we see... In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was toward God, and God was the Word. This was in the beginning toward God. All came into being through it, and apart from it, not even one thing came into being which has come into being. Do you see anywhere in this passage where Satan is mentioned as co-creator with God? No. 1 Corinthians 8, 6-7 reinforces the idea that God is the creator of all. For us there is one God, the Father, out of whom all is, and we for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all is, and we through him. But not in all is there this knowledge. Again, do you see Satan mentioned in here, in this passage concerning the creation of all things? No. Romans 11, 33 through 36 
Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and untraceable his ways! For who knew the mind of the Lord? Or who became his adviser? Or who gives to him first, and it will be repaid to him? Seeing that out of him, and through him, and for him is all. To him be the glory for the eons. Amen. Those three all-encompassing passages teach clearly that God creates all things. But remember, he specifically said that he is the creator of evil. Let's take a look at the fuller context in which God said this. Isaiah 45, 1 through 7 from the concordant version of the Old Testament. Thus says Yahweh to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I hold fast, to hold sway over nations before him. I shall ungird the wastes of kings, to open before him double doors and gates. They shall not be closed. I myself shall go before you, and I shall level mountains. I shall break down doors of bronze and hack down bars of iron. I give you treasures of darkness and buried goods of concealment, that you may know that I, Yahweh, calling you by your name, am the Elohim of Israel. On account of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I am calling you by your name. I am entitling you, yet you do not know me. I am Yahweh and there is no other. Except for me, there is no Elohim. I am forearming you, yet you do not know me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one apart from me. I am Yahweh and there is no other, former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil. I, Yahweh, make all these things. This prophecy was written by Isaiah concerning Cyrus, who was the future king of Persia. This was written approximately 150 years before Cyrus. God is, in essence, introducing himself to Cyrus, who would be born in a culture and a time with multiple gods who were creators of good and evil. Hello, Cyrus. You do not know me. I am Yahweh, and there is no other. Except for me, there is no Elohim former of light and creator of darkness, maker of good and creator of evil. I, Yahweh, make all these things. Cyrus was the king who, in 538 BC, granted the Jews permission to go back from Babylon to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Despite these very clear scriptures, many in Christianity attempt to pin the creation of evil on Satan, the adversary. A.K. Richardson is one of those who does this. Here is his proof that Satan created evil. You know, the Bible also teaches that the devil is the origin of evil. And for example, in John 8 and 44, the devil is called the father of lies because he is the origin of lies, including murder and sin. He influenced of the human family with it as well. Who created evil, therefore? And this is what Calvinists sometimes will ask us and retort. Did God not create everything? I've been asked that. I know it's a common question. You have to remember that evil is not a material part of the universe. Evil is not a thing. Okay? Evil is that which is contrary to the character of God or to the will of God. And that's done by free creatures. It's kind of like the analogy often used is darkness. What is darkness? Darkness is not a thing. Darkness is the absence of a thing. It's the absence of light. But it's not a thing. It's like evil. Evil is not a thing existing. It's not a force in the universe like in Star Wars. It is that which is contrary to God's character and will. And thus acted by free creatures. And that's what freedom is. It's kind of like, if, you know, God makes light and he makes free creatures. He doesn't make darkness, but since creatures are free, they are free. Therefore, to put their hand over the light and create darkness. Despite the clear words of God in Isaiah 45, 7, that he creates darkness and he creates evil. A.K. Richardson says God does not create darkness and does not create evil. A.K. gives the devil credit for the origin of evil, hoping to save God some face. And A.K. wraps this deception inside a scripture verse, John 8, 44. In John 8, 44, Jesus is speaking to Jews who were opposing him. 
They did not love God. They did not love Jesus. They disbelieved in him. And these are his harsh words to them. You are of your father, the adversary, and the desires of your father you are wanting to do. He was a man killer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, for truth is not in him. Whenever he may be speaking a lie, he is speaking of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. We see here that Satan is called the father of these people. Is he literally their father? And is he the ultimate source and origin of these people that were opposing Christ? No. And he is said to be the father of lies. As Jesus says, for he, the adversary, is a liar and the father of it. Does this mean that he is the ultimate source of evil and the origin of evil? Because he is the father of lies? No, it does not. The words in John 8:44 in no way contradict what God has told us in Isaiah 45:7 and all the other passages that said God is the creator of all things. Job had just gotten the living shit kicked out of him for several rounds by Satan. He lost all of his children, many of his possessions were stolen, many of his servants were killed, but Job recognized the ultimate source of all the suffering that he was enduring. It came from God. Here are Job's words in Job 2.10, speaking to his wife, who told Job to scorn God and die. Indeed, should we receive good from the one Elohim, and should we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Job recognized the truth that good comes from God as well as evil. And in recognizing this and saying it, he did not sin. He did not miss the mark with his lips. Job understood the truth concerning God and his relationship with good and evil. So we can see from Isaiah and Job that God is not only the originator of evil, but he's also the one that is the originator of evil individual instances of evil like that which happened in Job's life. Now obviously God will use intermediaries like Satan to go and do the evil, commit the evil, but the ultimate origin and source is God. Now I want us to think about this. If Satan is the origin and ultimate creator of evil, then God owes Satan because God has a knowledge of evil, which we look back in the Garden of Eden. God planted the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God, at this point, had the knowledge of good and evil. So if he didn't originate it and create it, he had to get that from Satan. Hmm. There's a problem. And because God has used evil for beneficial purposes, for example, the ultimate evil of bringing evil which the base definition of evil is simply bad, the opposite of good. He brought bad, he brought evil on his own son, and the suffering and death of Jesus was from God. But it was a beneficial evil, which all evil in the hands of God is beneficial. But if Satan is the originator of that, then God owes Satan a debt of gratitude. And that contradicts the scriptures. But first, I want us to see what it would look like if Satan was actually the originator of evil. A thank you note from God. He'll enjoy that. He's quite fond of black and blue. Dear Satan, my number one adversary, I've got to hand it to you. Evil is one of the best inventions I've come across in quite some time. It's proven to be quite a useful tool. Just between you and me, I wish I'd thought of it. Thank you for teaching me about it and allowing me to use it. Now I can save the world by bringing evil upon my son, and I now know how I will discipline and humble my children. I owe you one. Thank you. Nice work. Sincerely, God. This false scenario that Satan created something that benefits God in the long run completely breaks and contradicts the scriptures. We looked at this passage earlier verifying that God is the creator of all things 
But I think it's important to read through this again with this false scenario of Satan being the creator of evil fresh in our minds. Romans 11:33 through 36. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and untraceable his ways. For who knew the mind of the Lord or who became his advisor or who gives to him first and it will be repaid to him, seeing that out of him and through him and for him is all. To him be the glory for the eons. Amen. If Satan is the originator of evil, this diminishes God. Satan has now become the advisor of God by giving him something that he did not have before, the knowledge of evil and using a tool that Satan created. And verse 35 says, who gives to him first and it will be repaid him. Again, if Satan is the originator of evil, which God has used throughout the millennia for his beneficial purposes, God owes Satan a debt, a big debt of gratitude. And in reality, so do we. This false scenario of Satan being the origin of evil makes God a sinner, makes God one who misses the mark. God desired and wanted a perfect creation, but evil entered in somewhere from outside. God either didn't account for it, he couldn't do anything to stop it. So this creates a God who is impotent. This creates a God who misses the mark. He wanted this and he got that. And look at what it cost him. He had to send his own son to die to try to remedy all of the evil that's been propagated. Ultimately by Satan, according to the false scenario. So trying to relieve God from the responsibility for creating evil creates all kinds of evils, creates all kinds of lies. And instead of saving God's face, they make God look worse. They make him look impotent, weak, unable, and quite honestly, they turn God into a failure. But God, the true God, is no sinner. He did not miss the mark. Evil was a part of his plan from the beginning of his planning. He knew what he was doing. He created good. He created evil. He created light. He created darkness. All of these have a place within his creation so that he, in the end, will be all in all. So the truth that God created and is the origin of evil fits the plans of God to perfection. And God, being the originator of evil, will cause all evil in the end to be beneficial. Now, we don't always understand how these things can be beneficial, but God will use evil for his good purposes, just as he did with the ultimate evil, sending his son to die for the world and to reconcile the entire creation. It's the death of Christ. It's his blood that did that. That tremendous evil created the greatest blessings for God's creation, all of God's creation. So you can choose to believe in a God who is a sinner, who is weak, who misses the mark, or you can choose to believe in a God who created evil with a purpose in mind, a good purpose. Consider this, if Satan, by his free will, wrecked God's plans originally, what or who is going to stop him from wrecking God's plans again? That scenario leads to death, destruction, and despair. But that is not God's plan for you or for his entire creation. God's will is good and it will be done. Some within Christianity realize the fatal flaws of the false teaching that Satan is the originator of evil. So they've come up with another option on who created evil. There's a very popular Christian YouTube teacher that is a proponent of this view. I will be doing a video on this in the future, so stay tuned. If this video has helped you, please hit like and subscribe and check out this video next.